Hello, in this episode we're going to look at creating an MMO or an RPG style inventory system and we're going to use Java and MongoDB to achieve that. So one of these uh, systems they can be connected with either your Unreal Engine or your Unity project and uh, you could yeah, basically carry out the back-end work required for an inventory system to do that. So as usual there's a blog post covering the vast majority of the steps here um, but all of the code is basically available on the GitHub repository so some of the key pieces of interest might be actually the testing part where I show you how to configure your postman uh, for these requests. So there's some screenshot examples of how to do it, your uh, header requirements and the, the body, the, the JSON body that you should add as well. So what I'll probably do to get started with is show you it working using Postman so that you know um, whether this is something that you want for your project or not. Uh, and then we can start looking at the high level uh, code as well. So looking at the flow of things, right? Okay, so uh, to begin with, um, we're still using authentication here. So there's an account control. Um, it's something that I might actually deprecate later for, you know, in favor of something like AWS Cognito. Uh, so you can use an API gateway to basically uh, carry out all of your authentication requests. But at the moment, uh, we're still using internal auth. Uh, this was covered before, so I'm not going to go into too much detail of how this particular piece works. Uh, but we log in and we get ourselves this bearer token. So what I'm going to first do is assign this bearer token to all of our requests. So this authenticates all of these requests. Uh, and this is basically like uh, signing into a user and getting yourself that API key. Uh, so that's how general websites work. And that's basically what we're implementing here as well. Um, and let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, well, actually, I'll just clear some data first. So this is a test endpoint, you know, just to really help with uh, things like this, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an item. Uh, so I've covered the details of uh, the item in the blog post, but really like there's going to be a generic item object and we're going to set uh, the main class based on category. So we're going to have three categories right now, a consumable armor and weapon. Uh, we'll also have a item name. So this is something that we'll display to the user, you know, like cool armor in this case. Item ID, I can provide the ID right now, but maybe we'll just auto generate it instead later. Uh, tags, uh, so this is like the powerful tool here, basically it's just it's just a map, right, of keys and values. Uh, so this way we can keep the item object generic. So for example, uh, for a armor tag, we'll use something like a defense uh, name with value 30. And obviously you can add uh, them up, right, so this is an array, so we can have multiple properties belonging to one item. For a weapon, they'll have their own tags, right, so you can have damage and things like that, right. Uh, the value will refer to, you know, the store value, so how much uh, could you buy and sell it for, etc. And the uh, stacking options, uh, well, this is a stacking option, can you stack this item and what, what are the max stacks if you can, right? So for potions, maybe ammunition, etc., uh, you'll want them stacking. So not all of these things are actually implemented, but this is sort of future-proofing this concept uh, as we're developing it further. So I'll go ahead and create the first item, right? So the response object is basically mimicking the input. This uh, symbolizes that it was successful. So what I'll do is uh, I'll create another um, item here. So it will be called cool weapon. And uh, there we go. So here I'll have damage. And this weapon will do 50 damage, you know? so the value could be 2000 right so let's create this as well so there we go we've got a response um so what we can now do uh, is uh, spawn an item so in order to spawn an item uh, we should give an item id so your cool armor had id of one two three your cool weapon had id of three two one so let's go ahead and spawn your uh, cool armor on your map one at these coordinates right there we go. So we've now spawned this item. We get ourselves uh, a new instance ID, uh, right? And uh, it gives us some details about uh, what it is that we've spawned. So this item is spawned at this uh, location. The map here is referenced twice. I mean, um, the reason for that is because we can add an index on the, the lowest 
uh, key here. Like this is part of MongoDB optimization. So I'll have to consider whether you know these uh, should be. Uh, just on the lower level or part of location. It's nicer to be part of this object, uh, but it might be faster for it to be the other way. So I'll keep this consideration later. And here it, we provide the item details uh, of what was dropped. So you'll find this to be identical to the uh, item object that we spawned before. And here's just a timestamp of when it was spawned. So let's now create uh, drop a uh, weapon as well, so uh, let's just change these to some different values. So the coordinates are like now 150, 150, and we're going to spawn this weapon. All right, so now we've spawned a weapon. So if we go to your get nearby items, we can see the items that we dropped. So we should see two items exist right now, um, and uh, the first one is at coordinates 123, 123. The next one is at 150, 150. So one cool thing here is that um, we're going to be uh, basically providing the coordinates of where the user is. So we're going to see what items are close to this user, right? So for example, if we set this to well, let's set this to 300, uh, the default threshold is 100 either way. So if we click this, there's nothing nearby him now. And if we change the coordinates back to 100, 100, we see these two items are spawned. Okay, cool. So we've now gone through the three steps of creating an item, spawning it on your map, and then getting the nearby items to your character. Uh, so now let's look at the character uh, things. So to begin with, so for example, if I click uh, get inventory now, uh, nothing exists. And by the way, I haven't really carried out the error handling here yet. I'm, I'm mainly working on a happy path scenarios. So what we have to first do is uh, create an inventory for the user. This just simply initializes it and saves it to the database. Uh, now, if we fetch our inventory, we basically have our character. He has no items. Um, he doesn't have any gold. And his inventory size is a 10 by 10 sort of square system, right? It's just an array. Um, so what we'll try and do is we'll pick up an item. So in order to pick up an item, uh, you can see we have uh, the dropped items here. We'll just take this ID. So this ID refers to the cool armor, right? So we'll go here and we'll say we want to pick up this item. If I do that, uh, it returns me my uh, new inventory. So if I click get inventory now, I can see that and now I'm holding like this item, cool armor. And the location of this item is at zero, zero. So if I get nearby items now, you'll see that the armor is gone and all there is is just a weapon, right? So the weapon is at 150, 150. I can pick this item up as well. So if I go here and now I say I want to pick up the next item, I should have both of these items. So there's my armor and there's the weapon. So the location of the weapon is now at zero 01. So that's pretty good, right? Uh, and now if I get my inventory as well, this is also updated. Okay, so now we've tested uh, getting the inventory, picking up an item, and what we want to do is potentially drop the item. So in order to drop the item, we have to specify which uh, location the item is at, so zero, 00. And where do we want to drop the item? So let's drop it at 140, uh, 140. So obviously you can be anything you want. And now that we've dropped this item, uh, we get the response of the dropped item. And if we go back to here, we should see that dropped item again. Okay, great. So there it is. There's the cool armor that we just dropped. It's dropped at this uh, coordinates. And uh, yeah, basically that's, that's it. That's what we've implemented so far. So uh, the character now just contains the one uh, weapon again. Okay. Uh, so that, that's what we've created so far. So there's uh, two controllers, one for your inventory and one for your item. So let's, uh, let's have a look at them. Uh, so your item controller contains a couple of endpoints here. So one to create the item, one to spawn the item, and then your uh, endpoint to get the, the dropped items. Uh, this is a test endpoint for clearing the data. So um, really it's just for test purposes, right? Uh, you wouldn't really use that in production. Now, in order to create the item, we have to just simply 
Well, uh, your, your service manages all of the key uh, interfaces with uh, basically the repository layers. It's doing all of the complicated stuff, really, right? So in order to create an item, it's uh, fairly simple. In this case, we just get the item object. So we had the JSON representation of the object. So for example, if I say create item, so this directly reflects this item object, right? So we have a string item ID item name category tags stacking value so that's what we've added here so this was a super simple uh, item service just create an item and we uh, stick that item object in in a serialized form and there we go that, that was it so if we go back to something like spawn the item which is effectively dropping the item um, this is, well, to be fair, it's not super complicated either. We find the item by the ID, so we use the repository. We have ourselves the item ID. We generate a new UUID, so uh, these are unique identifiers. Um, and then we create a new object for the dropped item with uh, the item, uh, the location, you know, the, the map, and uh, the found item uh, from the item repository. So that's how we, we drop the item. Now drop item will be used in conjunction with um, other functions. So for example, uh, you could have a function for uh, killing a monster or like generating some loot, etc. So you want to spawn some items on uh, the map. So that's basically where you would use this function. Uh, so this is not really um, connected to the uh, user or the inventory at this stage. That's handled by the inventory controller, which utilizes this function as well. Um, now, getting the dropped items, so this one is slightly more complicated. Um, I've implemented a little helper function so that this uh, repository stays a bit cleaner. Uh, and what we have here is basically uh, a nested query for your MongoDB uh, database, uh, where basically the map is equal to uh, the map that you specify and your uh, x coordinate is within the range so we provide a threshold so it's greater than uh, this value and less than this value right and uh, the threshold at the moment is just a hundred so just a static threshold so it's uh, doing something relatively simple uh, but it just looks a bit complicated right so you do uh, dot find where uh, your map is equal to and your X is within range and your Y is within range. So that's all it is really. So that's how you get the items near your character. And um, I'm not sure if yeah, there's anything else to mention on the item controller. So let's look at the inventory controller. So uh, for the inventory controller, we have to specify the character name. So at the moment, I'm passing it via a header. So I'll show you uh, the header. Well, basically, any one of these should specify it. So you've got just a header, it's called character name, and just specify a character. So this can be whatever character you want, just make it you know consistent. Uh, so in order to pick up an item, uh, we basically get the character name and the dropped item ID. The drop item ID is that unique identifier for the dropped item. So we locate the uh, dropped item via that ID. We get the actual item object. We uh, get the inventory for the user. So we uh, get the inventory using the uh, character name. And then we basically uh, find the next available slot in your inventory. So remember that like, your inventory can be full. So you should basically reject it. You, you should validate this and reject it. At the moment, we don't do that here, by the way. Uh, so that will be uh, added in the near future. Uh, you generate a new character item. So your character item is basically uh, your item connected to an inventory slot, right? So it's just an interface or a join table between the two. Um, and we specify uh, the location within your inventory. So in, in my example, I've used location 2D. So I'm, I'm thinking of like a 2D uh, array for an inventory. It can be 1D, so imagine you've just got, got a list. So it doesn't have to be 2D. You can even go with something like a string or something, right? So you, you can be, you, you can change this to whatever you like essentially. But I think a typical uh, representation is just like a 2D um, array as an inventory, 
which seems pretty cool. And then you effectively add uh, that new item to your inventory. Right? So after you add it, you have to delete the dropped item from the map to make sure that other people can't uh, pick it up. And then you update your inventory. So uh, you, you did this locally in your Java server, then you have to uh, basically save that data to uh, the MongoDB as well. So that's how you pick up the item. Uh, in order to drop the item, uh, we basically do this. So we get the character name, we get the inventory location, uh, the, the location we just spoke earlier is XY coordinate uh, within your inventory. And then you've got your location on the map as well. So you specify the map, the X, Y, and Z coordinates as well. So uh, first of all, we get the character's inventory. Again, we do this by uh, reference of the character name. Uh, we get the uh, item at the location specified. So you're basically saying, I want to drop an item at uh, location 00. zero. So we uh, get that uh, item, we make sure that it actually exists, and um, we remove the item from the inventory list, we update the uh, inventory uh, with the database, and then we drop the item using the item service. So we had a look at this just earlier. All right, so this is uh, using the same factored implementation there. Okay. And if we go back to the controller, uh, getting inventory, this is a very simple function which basically just fetches the inventory object from MongoDB using your character name. And that's basically it. So that's the implementation that we have so far. Obviously, it's not complete. Uh, we need to make uh, a bunch of improvements, a, bun a bunch of changes. So for example, uh, each one of these um, item type, so you've got armor for example, weapon, uh, consumable, we extend the item, uh, but what we still need to do is something like, you know, uh, get damage. So then you have to look at uh, things like, um, you, you have your, your tags and then you, you, you look through the tags to find the one which has uh, the uh, name damage uh, or defense or whatever and uh, basically return the value specified to it. So the, there's still a bunch of changes that we have to make, uh, but it's work in progress and it's really hit the checkpoint where we can start uh, integrating it with uh, Unreal uh, and basically seeing some things happen uh, in UI. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it for now. Uh, any questions, you know, uh, mention it on comments, etc. I might create a um, a Discord channel so that we can basically discuss this easier, etc. Um, and yeah, sounds good. Speak soon. Bye.